First of all, you're going to need some thermal compound. I use Arctic Silver because I think it's higher quality than the original. Then you're going to need a spreader so you can spread the thermal paste evenly. Then you're going to need a Torx 8 screwdriver security uh, bit preferred. That's the one that has a little hole in the middle because these screws have a little metal pole coming up through the screws. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is turn the PlayStation on its back and you're going to want to remove this warranty sticker. And I know what you're thinking, is this a good idea? But in fact, it is. Because, you know, more than likely, your PlayStation is out of warranty. Anyways, if it's not, then you'll want to send it back into Sony. So I repeat, if your PlayStation is under warranty, you may want to send it back in to get it repaired. If not, keep going. Because you're going to want to take this warranty sticker off. And once you do, it's going to void your warranty with Sony. But if you've been having overheating errors, if it says it on the screen, or your PlayStation has been kind of lagging, and you determine it's not the hard drive, then this is exactly what you need to do. So as you're taking off the cover to get access to the hard drive, you're going to use a Phillips screwdriver, and then you're going to take off um, this screw. A lot of people call it the PlayStation screw because it has a lot of symbols and icons on the screw itself, and it's just a regular Phillips screw. Then there is this plastic uh, tab that you're going to want to pull up, and then you pull your hard drive out of the PlayStation itself. And you can lay this to the side, somewhere that's safe, that's not, it's not going to fall. And then you are ready to take the main screw out. This is a Torx 8 screw that is holding on the chassis. What I mean by chassis, I mean the black plastic coverings of the PlayStation 4 itself. Um, and this is a PlayStation Slim, guys, in case you haven't already noticed. So uh, you're going to want to start by pulling from the back gently once that screw is out. You just kind of grab a hold of it and pull up and back. Make sure you're facing backwards where all the ports are at, as you can see. And you don't want to do it too hard, but you do want to give it kind of a firm pull. And you just pull up, and it just pulls right off of there. Just like that, it's, it's up and off of there. So then you're going to want to lay this to the side. Again, in a place that it's not going to get damaged. Another thing I like to use when I'm working... On electronics is a metallic pad that will hold the screws as I take them out now the next part you will have to take off the front and it's much the same way you just go from the front and you pull up just like that and it pulls right off up and out of there and then you have both plastic covers off of your PlayStation 4 Slim. Okay, the next thing is you're going to see this Wi-Fi adapter that's built onto the PlayStation 4 motherboard. You're going to want to take a spudger, a plastic spudger, and disconnect that wire and just unplug it from the motherboard. You're then going to want to take that wi-fi wire and remove those stickers without breaking them and the next step is very important you're going to want to take a picture of the screw diagram right here so that when you put this back together you will have a map to put the screws back in next you will see these 
I.O. cables and two power connectors. You're going to want to take them out gently. First, I'm going to finish moving the Wi-Fi cable out of the way. And then this cable, you just slightly pull. And it just comes out. The next cable has a plastic arm lock mechanism that you want to be gentle, but just take a plastic spudger and push that arm up and then just pull the cable right out of there. And the remaining cables are just ones that you kind of pull. You can even wiggle it if you need to, but be gentle and just pull them out of place. And then that's all there is to that. But I cannot stress enough to be careful when you do this. The next is the power in the front. That is a power cable. You may need to wiggle it a little bit. And then you turn the PlayStation over and you are ready to start taking out the power supply. First, there is the Phillips screw to the Wi-Fi metal connector. And this is a Phillips screw. You're gonna to wanna to take that out and gently pry back the metal Wi-Fi connector. And like always be gentle and not breaking this. Okay, so there are three uh, screws near the top also that I'm not gonna show me taking those out, but they are Torx 8 screws near the top and they let you take off the little metal shield on top of the power supply. Now, do not try to take your power supply out yet because you're going to need to turn over the PlayStation and there is one screw that is still holding in the power supply from underneath on the other side. A lot of people make the mistake and they break a wire or the power supply cord itself. You do not want to make this mistake. Here is the location of the screw that you must take out to free up the power supply. Now, once all of the screws are out, you can take a plastic pry tool, which is the best method I found, and you can start lifting up on the PlayStation power supply. Now, don't try to pull it out all the way. As you can see right here, there is a power cord connected to the power supply. So you're gonna to wanna to hold on to the power supply gently and to the cord and wiggle it back and forth with just enough force and pull it out. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to remove the Wi-Fi bracket. And it just the wire is looped around and you just follow the diagram and move it out of that little loop. And the power supply is disconnected from the PlayStation. Just move it out of the way so that you can continue the work. Okay, I'm gonna turn the PlayStation over and you can see all of the screws that are going to be need, need to be taken out. And like I've said, make a diagram, take a picture, because you're going to want to go back to that picture if you forget which screw goes where. The last screw that needs to be taken out is on the other side of the PlayStation. It is holding the metal top bracket on to the PlayStation 4. You're going to want to use a Torx 8 and take that screw out, lay it to the side, and then just turn the PlayStation 4 back over and you are ready to remove the top metal plate that reveals the motherboard or logic board, whichever you prefer to call it, underneath. Okay, just raise up the metal plate, make sure the thermal pads are there, and then put it to the right, out of the way. And then you will notice that you can see the heat sink, but there is this little power connector right here that you have to be careful. 
and you just want to wiggle it back and forth until it becomes disconnected. Cannot stress, be careful enough. Okay, then you're going to want to take this heat sink off. It is a Phillips uh, screws. There's two of them. You're going to want to take this off. And there's a second screw. And you're going to want to make note of which side is up and which side is down. So when you go to put it back on, you put it back on the right way. And do not lose these screws. Put them in a safe place. Then you'll see that there is this uh, plastic uh, heat sink that's underneath. You, it just pulls right off. And again, just put it to the side, out of the way. And then do not pull the motherboard straight up because there is yet a connector that's on the motherboard. It is at the Wi-Fi cable, so pull it up and back. And this will reveal the second Wi-Fi connector. And you just take a plastic spudger and use it to disconnect the wire. You don't want to use metal because metal will damage the electrical connections on the motherboard. Now you can have access to the APU and you want to see up close exactly what has failed in this system. This is a close up underneath a microscope and you can see that the thermal paste, which its main purpose is to conduct heat to the heat sink, to let the heat sink absorb the heat and transfer the heat out of the system has dried up with time. There has been so much heat that it is cracked and this is evident underneath the microscope. I'm going to remove this with 91% rubbing alcohol, a spudger and some cotton swabs and some cloths. And I'm going to give this a good cleaning until I am ready to applicate fresh new thermal paste. And the thermal paste I'm going to be using is even better than the original factory thermal paste that was originally installed on the APU. And by APU, I mean Sony has designed their uh, system to have the video card and CPU built in to one chip. Don't use an over excessive amount of alcohol on the cotton swabs. You should be able to see that as you're applying it, that it evaporates into the air. This is going to give the chip a very good cleaning. Next, make sure that the thermal pads that protect the chips, such as the memory and other chips are there. These are the thermal pads and there are some also on the other metal bracket. Now I am going to clean off the thermal paste that is on the heat sink. Next, you are ready to start taking the screws off on the other side of the PlayStation so that you can remove this top metal bracket to gain access to the, uh, the fan. And the fan's purpose is to draw the heat out of the box once it's together the chassis the body the mold whatever you want to call it it's to pull the heat out of the box out of the playstation and into the air and it's going to be pushed out through these those vent holes around the playstation itself so another thing as you're doing this job you may want to clean the vent holes if you see that they're blocked or dirty or have any obstructions. Okay, next, there is one screw that I need to take off to remove the bottom shield. And that is this Phillips screw right here. Now, once I take this off, I should have access to 
the heat sink and the entire bottom and a lot of times the heat sink yep look the heat sink will become entrapped with debris as you can see right here this stops the airflow and the heat being able to be pushed out of the PlayStation 4, which is another thing that causes overheating. So, so far we've had two failures over time in this PlayStation. I'm taking a brush and removing some of the debris before I take an air compressor to it. So, so far the thermal compound has dried up, cracked, and failed, and there has been debris blocking the heat sink. Next, I am going to take off the fan because that is the third part in this combo that keeps the PlayStation cool. Uh, so, what you're going to need is it's a Phillips screwdriver, and you're going to take off these screws here. There's a screw on the left and a screw on the right. And then the fan should come right on out of there. And as you can see, it has some debris caked all around the fins of the fan. And it needs a good cleaning. A good proper cleaning. Also, I'm going to clean the chassis with Q-tips and cloth and rubbing alcohol. I'm going to clean it the best I can because you want good airflow. Yeah, once you get your PlayStation 4 apart, there's three things you're going to want to clean out with an air compressor before you clean it with rubbing alcohol. Okay, I have an air compressor here and I use it for cars and electronics. It's a very handy tool if you don't have one. I recommend you getting one. So I have the PlayStation 4 power supply. I have the PlayStation 4 uh, fan. This is the cooling fan. And I have the bottom tray to the PlayStation 4 that contains the heat sink. So first I'm going to spray out the power supply, uh, then the heat sink, and then the fan. Okay, to reduce the sound of the air compressor, I'm going to slow this video down and I'm going to show you the dust. As you can see, the dust and debris come out of the components. The camera doesn't do it justice, but there is a lot more that comes out. And guys, just like that, all the dust and crud that was inside of your PlayStation is now out of there. I'm gonna go in and clean this with rubbing alcohol and start to put the PlayStation back together. So if you haven't messed up so far, give yourself a pat on the back because we are halfway through. What I'm doing here is I'm taking alcohol and cotton swabs and I am cleaning the fins of the fan meticulously. I'm going around it because there are still traces of some dirt, not much, but I want to get it as clean as possible. If it's not good enough for me, why would it be good enough for you? Then I'm going to take a cloth and it also has alcohol on it. And I'm going to be cleaning the actual metal part of the bracket, the board, and I'm cleaning the heat sink. I want to get it all cleaned and even inside the fan, the fins of the heat sink. Next, I'm going to put the fan back on. We're actually starting to put the PlayStation back together now. And of course, there's those two screws that we saw just not too long ago that I'm gonna be putting them back in, mounting, the the fan back to the PlayStation 4 and also I would like to um, say off camera that I did clean 
the plastic around the case, which you may want to do if you find any obstructions. Just use a cloth and uh, you know alcohol to clean that, the vents. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that power supply uh, cord is out of the way. You don't wanna bend any cords or get any cords trapped underneath metal framing as you're putting this back together. In fact, I almost, almost get it trapped right here. These ribbon cables, I have just laid the metal frame on top. Make sure you pull these ribbon cables away from the metal tray. You do not want to get them stuck. Okay, so before any screws are put back in, make sure those are out of the way. Then you can start putting the screws back in. And now another important part in this entire process. I'm taking this brush, bristle brush, and just like the other parts of the PlayStation, I am cleaning the motherboard even more as I've already cleaned it with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and Q-tips and cloth. I'm just going over it, making sure there's no more debris, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the new thermal paste. And many people apply this in many different ways. There's tons of methods, but here's the method I'm going to use. I'm going to put about two drops worth of Arctic Silver. And right there is what I mean by two drops, if you can see it. And I'm going to take this card and I'm going to use it to spread it evenly across the die, which is the top here, the little square top of the APU. And I'm going to get it evenly as I can and as clean as I can because the less amount of bubbles that is in the thermal compound the better of a connection it is going to have when it touches the metal of the heat sink and that is the whole purpose of the heat sink is to have a smooth connection that the thermal paste provides a conductor to that die to the heat sink to absorb the heat to transfer it to the fan and the fan pulls it out of the playstation 4 so here you're going to want to smooth down that thermal paste as smooth as you can. And you may want to use Q-tips or a cloth, whatever you have, that if you get any make a mess around the APU. And you're going to want to get it as smooth as you can. And then I'm going to do what they call a placement assessment. That's my own words for this. I'm going to lay the motherboard down and I'm going to make an imprint of where the actual die is going to touch the heat sink. Another important part, guys, is when you're taking this apart, there is this little screw tab. That's what I'm going to call it. That goes back into the heat sink. That is important. Do not forget to put that back in place. And it just fits in just like that. Now, since I know where the die is going to touch the motherboard, I'm going to put one drop there to where the die goes. And then I'm going to smooth out the thermal paste on the die on the board. And then you line up the back of the logic board or the motherboard, whichever you may want to call it. Make sure that all the cables are out of the way and have clearance as you're placing the motherboard back into place. You do not want to get any cables stuck underneath there. That would You would have to take it all back apart and that would be very aggravating. So make sure all these cables are out of the way and have clearance. And remember, there is a power cable right here that you're gonna wanna plug in. You're going to want to plug this one in first before you put the metal shield back on and the one down here near the
the bottom, you can plug that back in. Make sure before you put the metal shield back on that you put this heat sink back on. I also cleaned this with rubbing alcohol earlier also. So I'm putting it back on. And this right here, you're going to make sure it kind of has a groove in it. And the groove that's um, pointed downwards uh, is the uh, way it goes back on. And it has very distinctive two black metal screws that are Phillips. You're going to want to put those back on there and tighten them down. Again, don't tighten it as hard as you can, but make sure it's snug. A lot of people over tighten these and end up breaking their motherboards. So you do not want to do that. Just get it tight and snug. And that's what I'm doing here. And this will give it a good connection to that heat sink underneath. Almost done. And then just tighten it up. And then that part is done. You're then ready to put the shield, the top shield back over the motherboard. Do not connect the ribbon cables yet. You will connect the ribbon cables once the top shield is on. Okay, here's the ribbon cables and I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect them to the motherboard. Remember these are just the shove in ones. So you gently push it in until the black line there is a black line on those and that is how far it needs to be pushed in there is the one in the middle that has the plastic arm bracket that you're going to want to be careful here and it just gently slides in and then you just close that arm bracket make sure it's snug and then you're ready for the other ones the other remaining ribbon cables just push in until they meet that black line indicator. And then we have this Wi-Fi cord and you're going to want to pull up the, the stickers. One is kind of foamish like and the other is paper like. And you're going to want to pull those up and put the cord underneath of it because it holds the cord in place and then you're going to want to reconnect it to the Wi-Fi pigtail connector on the back on the back left edge of the motherboard you're going to want to make sure that it snaps on good you can actually hear it snap when it snaps on there and it's very important that you get it on there the right way so that you will be able to connect to the internet good. Make sure the stickers are on. Next, you put all the screws back on the top metal plate. This is where you get your picture that you took for a map or a diagram to put those back. Once you get that top plate back on, then you're going to, there's going to be three screws near the fan. There's going to be two long screws, and then there's going to be one little one in the upper right now once you get those on you tighten them down and again don't use excessive force we all know we like to be like the incredible hawk and put them on there as tight as we can but if you do that you could strip the screws or you could actually break it because this is it's going into plastic so be very careful and cautious so I'm putting in the last screw here now. And then once that's in, I'm going to prep the board for the power supply. There is a pigtail here for the second Wi-Fi connector. I'm going to go ahead and connect that to the motherboard that's on the inside, as you can see. And it's going to snap down on there. And I'm going to take the Wi-Fi cable and on the top of the plastic case, 
there will be indentions that you slide the wire down into as it holds the wire in place. This keeps the wire out of the place so that the power supply can fit inside easily. Next, I'm going to take the power supply and you remember that connector, this one right here? Yeah, this connector. So you're going to have to, you can't see it the best from this angle, but when you put it back in, you just wiggle it if you have to, but be kind of delicately with it and push it back into place. And then there are two connectors down inside there that connect inside the power supply. It should just fit on and fit snug. And then you're gonna put your Wi-Fi connection plate back on the power supply. Then you're gonna put this metal plate back over the power supply. And there's gonna be three kind of long screws. Two of them are gonna be the same size. The one big one is going to go on the left and then there's actually going to be one that's a little shorter than the other one. It's going to go on the far right and that's where you may get confused. The same size do not go into the other, other side. In fact, the long one goes in the middle here and it connects to the bottom tray on the other side. And here is the last screw, which is the smaller one. And it goes into the right of the power supply. And you just tighten that up there. Then there are two remaining screws on each side of the power supply as I have already put a small Phillips screw on the metal bracket of the Wi-Fi connector. So you put one on the left side of the power supply and the remaining one on the right side of the power supply like I'm doing here. I'm putting the bottom back on first. The trick is to tilt it forward and then backward. You put that lip over the front first and then you just push it down backwards and it snaps right into place and the same thing for the front you put the lip over the front push back and you snap the case back down onto the cage of the playstation 4 and it will all be into place next what we want to do is with the hard drive, the bottom side facing up, you push the hard drive in until you can feel it connect to the SATA connector. And remember that PlayStation screw, that is what goes in to put the hard drive into place, to hold it in place. And it is a Phillips screw. So you just take a Phillips screwdriver and you just tighten that up and this is going to hold your hard drive in place. And again, it doesn't have to be tight as you can do it. Just make it kind of flush. And next is the main screw that holds the case in place. Uh, that's going to be a, T, a Torx 8 screw. And that goes back into place right there. And that's going to make sure that the case is on good and tight and in place. There we go. And then it's optional. If you want, you can put the sticker back on. Then you will put the, the side, that cover, that covers the hard drive back over the PlayStation 4 until it snaps into place. And then that's it. You're done. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. <laughs>